In a developing country, more than one out of seven children die before they reach the age of five, almost always from a treatable illness. That's 24,000 every day. 8.8 million every year. Imagine, 400 busloads of children die every day. There is a widespread lethal sickness that targets children under five. The truth is, almost all these children die from a common disease we know how to cure. It's not a virus. It's not a pandemic. It's simply our neglect. It was when he was one and a half years old that Baisal needed serious medical treatment. He had diarrhea, didn't want to eat, didn't want to drink. Basically, he was not well. He was not active like other children. Every time there is a flood, dirty water and garbage comes into the house. Baisal often plays in the flood water. I'm sure it contributes to his sickness. I had a second child that was also sick all the time. When she was only one, she got dengue fever. I didn't know what to do. When I finally got her to the hospital, she only got three hours of treatment. Later that day, she died. I know now that I brought her to the hospital too late. I'm very afraid that dengue fever will come again, like the epidemic, like the one before that killed my child. Around the world, waterborne diseases pose a huge risk to children under five. For many communities, the source of household drinking water is also used as a dumping area for human or animal waste. Water is very, very important and it's a crucial aspect uh, in children's and communities' lives, especially the pregnant mothers. Pregnant mothers, they need to be taken care of. So they can be able also to fetch water, then they also get clean water within their bodies, whereby the children, the young ones, the fetus are not affected. There are several types of illnesses that really emanate uh, from dirty water. Yeah, there is diarrhea, there is also the intestinal diseases and parasites. Uh, they affect especially the young children. If they don't get treatment, as then children would lose water within their bodies, then children would lose blood within their bodies, then they end up uh, dying. You see, there's a fight when you're fetching water. That's where the cows drink their water. That's where the people fetch their water. That is also where the washing is done. So basically, we are competing for the dirty water. My baby is sick. I'm washing the nappies and cloths to be able to take him to the health center. He already has diarrhea because of the water. There's blood. Blood is coming out. The solutions are, are really well known. Give a child clean water, nutrition, access to health care, and they'll grow and thrive. So we know how to make things right. But children continue to die, thousands of them each day. Why? After six months, Rennie started to be sick regularly. By the time she was 10 months old, Rennie had a respiratory illness. A month ago, the doctor diagnosed Rennie with hepatitis. I have little money to buy food. We only eat once a day. My husband works as a fisherman, but he's been missing for five months. There's no news from him. I'm really heartbroken about Rennie's health condition because I can't afford to buy medicine for her. When Rennie gets sick, I just cry and cry. Diarrhea, dysentery, malnutrition, pneumonia, malaria, 
These killer diseases can be prevented with the simplest of remedies, but only if access to basic health care is available. More and more children are getting assistance, so the numbers are going down. But it's not dramatic, it's very insignificant. Part of that reason is that as we treat more children, more get the message and more people come. For children to survive, their communities need to be strong. They need access to basic health care and nutrition. They need clean water sources and sanitation facilities. And their mothers need to be empowered to keep their families healthy. This clinic is a health clinic for village members that focuses on children under five. It's also an education center for pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. Here they learn to cook good food for children under five. It doesn't have to be expensive food, but food that provides all the nutrients for the children. When I was pregnant with my second child, I joined the group. I learned about the type of food that's important for my baby. At the clinic, they told me that I have to exclusively breastfeed my baby for six months. There is a big difference between my first child and my second child. When I delivered my first child, I didn't know much about nutritious food. My first child was malnourished when she was born. She was often ill, often got sick and she couldn't eat a lot of food. She's late in learning how to talk and still speaks poorly. She's now six years old, compared to my second child, who is two. My second child speaks better than her. We have low-cost, low-tech ways that give every child the opportunity to live beyond their fifth birthday. There is no mystery to solving this problem. Millions of children are still dying before the age of five because of our neglect. Five years is not a child's lifetime. The Canadian government will make children and their mothers a priority at this year's G8 Summit. What does that mean? Use your voice. Encourage our government to commit significant funds to stop child and maternal deaths. Making them a priority is not enough. Take five minutes. Do five things. Support a child in need. Know what children face. Join the campaign network. Share the campaign with others. Act to save a child's life. No individual or organization can solve this problem on their own. But together, we can make change happen. Join World Vision's Five for Five campaign. Five years is not a child's lifetime.